So in this video, I'm actually going to be talking about why AD Vi isn't as bad as everybody's been saying it is lately for some reason. I've been seeing all this slander about AD Vi, and personally, that's my favorite way to play Vi. But I'm actually not going to make this video to like talk about how great AD Vi is while trashing, say, Tank Vi. Instead, I'm just going to explain why both of them are actually pretty good right now. And the problem I'm really seeing is people playing AD Vi the same way you play Tank Vi, and that's not the way you're actually really supposed to do it. If you're going to play full AD Vi, you're going to blow somebody up when you ult them, but you're going to get killed. So you do have to play a bit differently than Tank Vi gets to play. And let me explain pretty much the time frame. Courage of the Colossus came in in the preseason of Season 6, or I guess you could say Season 7, but to give you an exact date, the preseason starts every year in about November. So November 2016, we started the preseason for what would eventually be Season 7, and a new Keystone Master came in called Courage of the Colossus. What it meant was that if you had some hard form of CC, crowd control, it would give you a shield when you go in that would also be bigger based on how many enemies were nearby. So it allowed divers like Vi or Jarvan or any of those guys to dive into the enemy and then get a shield if they land their CC to protect them from diving into the enemy. So what you started to see a lot of was really a lot of people abused Courage of the Colossus, but from a jungler standpoint, Vi was one of the people that actually benefited the most initially from that mastery in the jungle. And as such, you saw a lot of people decide to start building your tank like, mainly building like Trinity Force into full tank, so they have a little bit of damage, but could go into a team fight, not get blown up, and pretty much cover up Vi's weakness of just being CC'd to death or something if she tries to dive in and blow up a priority target from being full AD Vi. Now I'm gonna go over AD Vi first, because like I said, that's my favorite way to play Vi, and I'm just, I think people should be more concerned about the Vi's who ult someone when they're in the last second of their recall, and then get sent flying all the way to the enemy base and die, more so than just AD Vi itself. But let me talk about AD Vi, because like I said, that's my favorite way to play it, and before Courage of the Colossus existed, this was a way to play Vi. The thing is, you have to remember though, is you kind of have to think about how you're going to use your engaging tool of your ultimate, which is an unstoppable way to get to somebody. Assault and battery can't be CC'd, it can't be cleansed, when she locks onto you, she's going to get to you no matter what, unless of course you kill her first before she gets there. With that said, the thing about Vi in general is she's always been, unlike some junglers, who maybe they have a really good ultimate or they can get a really good kickoff or something like that, Vi is a really good team fighting jungler, kind of like Jarvan in a sense, depending on how you build Jarvan. She's an example of somebody who, if she doesn't engage right away, it's fine because maybe she can team fight. She has the AoE with her E, her punches and stuff. She can even peel a little bit if you really want to use her ultimate that way. You're not really supposed to, but you can. But she can do other things besides just a single dimension, you know, ultimate point and click, go in, lock down a target, kill somebody. She can team fight. She can peel a little bit. She can work that way. With AD Vi, you kind of have to pick your engages. You can't just blindly always ult just because you're Vi. Even if you're the only engage on your team, in which case your team is relying on you to engage, you still can't just blindly and without thought ult the enemy AD carry, especially when the enemy AD carry is grouped with their team and you're quite a bit ahead of your team. Like, I'm sorry, AD Vi doesn't suck if your AD Vi is deciding that she's miles ahead of the rest of your team, she goes to ult the enemy carry who's just grouped up with the other, you know, four members of their team, and they get caught out and die. That's not AD Vi's fault, that's the player not thinking, and that's the point of this video. You kinda have to think about how you engage. Sure, you're gonna have some damage, so if you get on top of the enemy like AD carry, you're gonna blow them up relatively quickly because of all the damage you have. One of my guilty pleasures was actually building Lethality Vi when Lethality was super strong. You take Lethality Runes, Lethality Mastery, Thunderlords, and then you just build all the lethality items, you can literally almost one-shot somebody with just the ultimate alone. So if you did ult somebody, got on top of them, and then punched them, they're probably dead right there. So then even if you die, you go one for one, you're kind of like Rengar in that instance, where it's like, oh hey, there's a pink ward, but I'm Rengar, I'm just gonna jump in and kill somebody anyway. Because like, that ever stopped a jungler, ever. But furthermore, that's, that is a way you could play Vi if you had that much damage and you're that far ahead. But ideally, what I'm seeing these complaints for is because the AD Vi's usually are not that far ahead, in which case they're just costing their team kills and giving the enemy team free kills. In which case, again, like I said, you have to think about your engages, and what that really means is sometimes you might have to hang back a bit. You might have to use your ultimate after the team fight has broken out, after the lines have started been divided, after some people have started dropping low, and then you ult as kind of like I want to say like a secondary engage, because somebody engaged to start the fight and you didn't engage yet, so then you gotta use your ultimate smart. 
Like, maybe you just hang back a bit, team fight with the E a little bit, get some, you know, AoE damage done that way. And then maybe when the tank has been dealt with or something like that, you've hung back enough to help your AD carry survive whatever their front line is. Now, because the enemy doesn't have a front line, now you ult their back line. Now granted, depending on the AD carry, if they have range, you're going to get to Jinx or Caitlyn, you might not have that kind of time, because while you're dealing with the enemy front line, their back line is just, you know, blowing you up. But in an ideal world, playing AD Vi correctly is not about, you know, just blindly ulting in and killing somebody just because you can. It's about what you should do, which is, you know, play a little safer. You're, you're squishier when you play AD Vi. You have the damage to kill people, and you can be effective, especially in the early game as AD Vi, more than Tank Vi in my opinion. But you do not want to give the enemy free kills because you think that just because you're the engage and just because you have a point and click ability, that's really just the only way to go. And I know I'm kind of just repeating myself at this point, but that's really kind of the main point I'm trying to drive home. But maybe if I say it enough times, people will actually, you know, hear it and understand what I'm saying. Because that's the biggest thing I see with AD Vi's. AD Vi isn't bad. People playing AD Vi are bad. But, like I did say, I wasn't going to make this to slander Tank Vi, I am going to talk about why Tank Vi is rather fantastic as well. Because Vi is my second favorite champion of all time period, she's second only to Jinx, and there's like a big gap between second and third place. So with that said, Tank Vi, like I said in the beginning of the video, she benefited from Courage of the Colossus. She can build tanky, she can go in, and she won't die. So in an ideal world where you're maybe the only engage, maybe that's not the ideal world, of course, but where you're the only engage, you have to engage. You build Tank Vi, you take Courage of the Colossus, you survive engages, and even if you engage miles ahead of your team, you're going to stay alive and maybe on top of priority targets long enough for your team to follow up with extra engage. So now you can start a fight and you won't get blown up like AD Vi would, but you won't do as much damage. Like The thing I don't like about Tank Vi personally is you don't have no damage. But you won't blow somebody up as fast. When you're Vi, or when I'm playing Vi, I just want to go in and I want to beat somebody up. And I want to beat them up rather quickly so that I can get out. With Tank Vi, that doesn't really happen. But you do survive long enough to beat them up eventually over time. And cause them a headache. In a team fight, if your AD carry is, you know, safe enough. Let's say you have a tank front line. That you can just stay on top of the enemy AD carry. So they have to spend their entire time kiting you who's not dying because you're tanky. Because you have Courage of the Colossus as well. You've kind of taken the enemy AD carry out of the team fight. So now they're lacking damage because one of their carries is getting their face, you know, your fist or whatever, just beaten in. And if the team doesn't decide to peel for them, they are eventually going to die to you. In which case, now your team is fighting a 4v4, but your force still has your AD carry, which can just out DPS to kill enemy tanks and whatever else is left of the enemy after that. So Tank Vi definitely has a place because. Similar to how AD Vi might be able to go one for one if she's ahead enough, she can go in, blow up the AD carry in like two hits and maybe die because she's squishy. Tank Vi can kind of do the same thing after that engage is started because in terms of one for one, you're not going to really be fighting with your team, but you've pretty much guaranteed one of the enemy carries are not going to be fighting with their team either. So it's about who has the better 4v4 kind of in both situations and that's kind of what I wanted to highlight in conclusion is that both Vi's are played a little bit differently. With Tank Vi, you can gauge a bit earlier, you'll stay alive a bit longer, you can be a headache for a long period of time because he's also super tanky, and as the game goes later, the tankier you get, you kind of become another frontline for your carries as well. And with AD Vi, you might be more of a nuke. You're going in for a 1v1 or 1 for one but you're going to cake out somebody with Thunderlords or something like that. But both Vi's are kind of played on the mindset of, who has the better 4v4 comp? Who can 4v4 better without you in the comp? Whether it's because you go in, blow somebody up, and then get blown up, or you go in and just stay on top of somebody forever until your team eventually beats the other four. And then if for some reason the AD carry isn't dead because you're lacking damage, well the enemy team's dead so now your carries can come and help you finish off the enemy AD carry. So that's pretty much what I think are the benefits, pros, and good things about both AD Vi and Tank Vi for that matter. So instead of making you know, a division line and saying, you know, this one's better than the other, personally I do like AD Vi a lot better. That's my favorite way to play Vi. Um, I just like, you know, playing Vi, diving in, and blowing somebody up. I don't really see the point of doing it if you're not going to do that. I don't really like the lack of damage Tank Vi has, but I respect the playstyle that Tank Vi is. I just think people need to remember that they are two different kinds of playstyles because of how beefy you are or are not. So that's going to be all for this video. It's kind of really just opinionated, but let's free. You know, we can have a discussion about this. If you have opinions about AD Vi or Tank Vi, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I don't judge. Um, I do have my own opinions, but I'm not going to shoot you down for your opinion. So feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. 
that's all for this video. Thank you for watching this video this far if you did. I don't know which video will be next, because life will be quite a mess. So until next time, take care from the Fire Godai FS. Thank you for watching.